welcome everyone. You are still watching. If you watched this from the from the beginning, I appreciate it. If what's it called? You are still watching Indie Three 2014 Day Two. Um, this is our last panel of tonight, actually. Um, and this is a panel Yay! full of really full of streamers and, and less players who honestly, like, I don't know. I can do do too much introduction because they're all actually really cool from what I've talked about. Um, we have uh, we have Biwi, we have Kish. We have Parlock and we have Squeaky B. And I'm going to just come out and I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let these people just talk about what they want to say. Um, this is a particular panel on streaming and the lifestyle of streaming and also streaming um, really helped people's lives. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so I'm going to go mute now and I'm going to let people say what they need to say. Okay. Hi, uh, this is Squeaky B. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the panel. Uh, essentially, what uh, we'd like to talk about today is how streaming has impacted our lives personally. It, um, streaming sometimes is viewed as a superficial hobby that people do for attention or to try to get famous, um, and that's not always the case. And we have some particular stories for you that we're basically just going to share some personal stuff with you, and hopefully you can relate. And if any of you feel like you can't stream because you're not flashy enough or because, you know, you don't feel like you have anything to offer, um, some of us started streaming simply because we needed to. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, like I said, I'm Squeaky B. Everybody else, uh, if you want to introduce yourselves. Uh, Bee Wee, go ahead and introduce she yourself. Noise, she just goes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm all professional. Brilliant. Everyone else is snorting. This is beautiful. <laughs> you knew who you brought to this panel. This is true. You knew what you I were... did it to myself. I did yeah. it to myself. This is all self All right, all right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off then. Okay. Uh, my name is by winningism or Amy or B. We for short, because my name is ridiculously long and I uh, stream over on Twitch and Hitbox here. Uh, I also do YouTube. I'm also working for uh, indie game magazine. Uh, I'm one of their streamers as well. And I am also a game dev as well. Yeah. It's me. Renaissance woman. Renaissance woman. All right. Kishi. Uh okay <laughs> hi i'm kishi uh I, I i guess i don't have a big reputation as the bio Biwi has but um i so, i am actually i'm an artist um huh. well yeah i'm a graphic and fine art fine art artist and uh hopefully maybe help in the gaming with Bibi, but of uh, yeah, it's like yeah, me. Hi, <laughs> uh, Kishi streams over on Twitch as well. I want to try Hitbox sometime. Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna move to Hitbox, but she does art streams primarily. All right, Parlock, yeah. your turn. Hey, you. uh, I'm Parlock. I'm a primarily a YouTube person with Let's Plays and that sort of thing. But I also do streaming on Hitbox sometimes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm not an artist. I'm not a dev. I'm not a musician. I'm just a guy who talks into a microphone a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and I do it fabulously. Yeah, you do. <laughs> okay, and as I said, I'm Squeaky B. I stream here at Hitbox. Um, I started a YouTube channel. We'll see where that goes. And I am on the game dev team with Biwi and Kishi, and I am also a singer. And uh, I talk on panels a lot. So <laughs> um, I guess to get started, uh, does anybody have a story they'd like to share about how streaming has helped them in their day-to-day -day life, their real life, where you think if it wasn't for streaming, this particular part of your life might not have been possible or improved? Because um, chat is talking about my voice a bit and... Um... It's actually kind of relevant to what I was going to say anyway. Um, I'll figure I'll start it, I guess. Uh, before I started doing YouTube and streaming and that sort of thing, I used to have a lot of uh, speech and language problems, particularly with, you know, processing what I was going to say as I was saying it. Like, I would start a sentence and I'd be completely unable to finish it because I couldn't figure out what words I needed to use in the right order. And I noticed that as I started doing YouTube more, and um, in particular specific series, like I did a Let's Play on Oblivion, and a lot of that is walking between places for hours, and, well, 
for ages on end with not a lot happening. And I just started being able to talk over it more and more and more. And that sort of thing, and particularly like streaming and Let's Plays and that sort of thing, has definitely helped with thinking on the spot as what I'm saying and has really improved my speaking skills, I guess. And, you know, it it, it has helped a lot with confidence as well, because I used to be really... I wouldn't say I was really embarrassed about how I spoke, but I would all, I was always really self-conscious that I would start a sentence being unable to finish it. And that's basically gone away because I figured out a lot of stuff about talking, a lot of stuff about presentation and public speaking, I guess. That has applied to real life as well. And I don't think if I'd done YouTube, I would have never have learned any of that. So that's basically the biggest thing that this gig has really contributed to me in my life in general, I guess. <laughs> Is there anything else that like happened in your life, anything big in the past year that maybe uh, streaming or the online community or anything like that helped you get through? Um, yeah, that sort of, kind of. I, um, so uh, just over a year ago, I uh, came out as gay and a part of that was, so it's like when you come out, it's very difficult to not think about it because it's something you've been thinking about for so long anyway. And I, I use streaming as a way to talk about that a bit more than, it's like I don't really talk about it that much anymore. But back when it happened, I would, I, I, I did a stream talking about how it's all done in games and that sort of thing. And having that outlet really helped with processing what was actually, what I was going through at that time, which I think was really, really helpful and really important. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Biwi or Kishi, would you like to go next? Uh, well, I mean... I can I can go next. My 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 deal is like super super long, so I don't mine, know. Minus two. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if I want to take up all this time and then be like, I'll follow that. See you. <laughs> see what you can do. <laughs> go That's right fine. ahead, Pee Wee. Go right ahead. It doesn't okay. matter. I'll go. I don't care. Go ahead, Pee Wee. All right. All right. Everybody, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a little story time here. So I got started initially doing YouTube um, because I really needed a hobby. That's really what it came down to. And I thought, you know what? I've been told that I'm reasonably funny and entertaining by most people. I'm going to go ahead and see how that works out. Through that, I met uh, other people like uh, my friend Tenchi, who is a streamer, and I met you know him. And through that, I decided, you know what? I think I'm going to give this streaming thing a try. And it seemed to work out you know, pretty well for me. I met like some of the best friends I've ever had in my life um and about yeah like this woman here squeaky b who just <laughs> me 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 i i i <laughs> i love you i love you too <laughs> but um so what happened was about six almost seven months ago um my son, I'm a single mom, by the way, on top of all the other stuff that I do, I'm a single mom, and I was working god-awful hours uh, a couple months ago, actually about a month and a half ago, um, where I would literally stay up 72 hours each week straight, because I would have to work 12-hour shifts back-to-back, uh, -back, and then be awake all day with my son, because we just did not make hardly any money. It was just, it was horrific. And I did that for four years straight. And then he got really sick. It was something we had no idea. The doctors still don't know what he had. It eventually did go away, but they were just utterly just flabbergasted as what, what was going on with my son. He basically was throwing up and had just the runs for about two months straight. He just was not getting any better. We couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I was going through literally a pack of diapers a day which is so super expensive because they're like $20, $30 a pack. So already not having a lot of money, we were really just like running out of options very, very quickly. And it came down to other bills came up and I couldn't pay them. And then it came down to I couldn't pay my rent. So I was trying to float along with that as much as possible. Um, my son's father wasn't able to help us out. Uh, he was just like, I have nothing left I can give you. I just, I... I have to pay my bills too. So we really were just utterly screwed. So I was playing 
this game on stream, I was playing Assault Android Cactus, and I got to the boss. Oh god, what is it? What is even the boss's name? I'm totally blanking on it. That's what is it? As no. soon as you said it, I forgot. It's the first one. It's the first oh, one. Um. Oh god damn it, me too. Right? <laughs> What is not, his name? Not just, 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 Mick Spidey! What's Spidey, his name? Mick Spidey, what's his name? I forgot his name. Embryo. The first boss. Embryo! Embryo! Yes, Embryo. I got to Embryo. Got him before Spidey. <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> so I was playing Embryo, and Embryo is a notoriously rough boss. But I was already, like, at, like, the ultimate stress level. I couldn't keep it together for much longer. And then I started losing just repeatedly. And I was getting more and more frustrated, more and more agitated. I actually had to turn off my camera on stream. I had to turn off my microphone while I tried to beat this boss. And I just kept dying. And I'm getting angrier and angrier. And I just shut off the stream. I was just like, I'm done. I didn't even say goodbye. I was just like, nope, I'm done. McSpidey came to me and he's like, what's going on? You had a complete meltdown. What is happening? And I finally just like, because I don't, I have this bad habit where I don't like to tell people when things are wrong. I like to internalize it and be the strong woman to take care of it myself. But this was beyond what I could do. McSpidey got me talking. And from there, he got me to say to people, I need help. We have to do something. So literally in 10 hours, these amazing people that I have known came up with a 48-hour charity stream for me. To where they would just play games in shifts for 48 hours and covered it over an entire weekend and we raised god it was like two over two thousand dollars i needed 600 to get myself through just that month and they gave me two thousand dollars it literally saved my son and i we we were going to be homeless we were going to have to live out of my car and I knew somebody was going to call Child Protective Services on me. I knew I was going to lose my child and just everything was just going to go so, just horrifically badly for me. And this community really pulled together and helped save my life, my livelihood. Things have gotten so much better um, since then, but I don't know what would have happened had they not been there for me. So really, this is not just... Streaming is not just something that you can just do as just, you know, an entertainment thing. You can really pull together and do amazing th things for other people. The games are just there as like an excuse to get together. It's just something there to entertain the people while the time goes by. And tell, you know, just reaching out to other people just to get them in there to talk about it. So, yeah. I am truly blessed to have been part of this community and had this amazing thing happened for me. Yeah, we're the actually going to talk. Uh, I'm sorry. The end. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you, you had like a long pause. So I thought I thought you were done. I apologize. Um, we're actually going to talk more about the fundraising aspect of streaming and how it's helped people uh, on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are going to get to hear all kinds of stuff. Uh, more stories like Bewey's, um, particularly pertaining to how you know, we've banded together as a community to help each other in times of need, which um, I'm really glad we're going to talk about as well. Um, it, I, Bewey, did you have any other, any other like awesome stories about how streaming like completely changed your life? Um, other than just being like learning to be more comfortable with myself and my own awkwardness and like uh, Parlock was talking about, you know, coming out being gay. I came out like really and started being like, okay with, uh, uh, being bisexual and bipolar, <laughs> which is a fun little combination, which is, you mm -hmm. know, my name by winning is, and that's like the first thing they ask me, everybody's like, are you bisexual? I'm like, well, yeah, but that's not where the name comes from, actually. That, the name comes from I was drinking one night, but that's not the point. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sloth. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway. So. Sloth. What, what about sloth? <laughs> sloth board who is in the chat here. How, how did you meet Sloth? I met Sloth. Um, <laughs> you know what? Actually, it's funny. We have talked about this. We are not exactly sure how we met exactly. We're not sure if we met over Twitter or if we met in Tenchi's chat. We're not sure. The point is, I met the love of my life. 
through this as well. He's in the chat there as well, chatting with you all, Mr. Slothborn in there. He's in the other room. <laughs> so what, have, what actually happened during my 48-hour charity event that everybody did for me, <laughs> yeah, this sloth guy sounds like a real cool dude. <laughs> he's, he's pretty cool. Um, what happened is actually during that charity event that um, it did for me, um, Slothborn and I actually started dating during that exact weekend. <laughs> And I moved across the country to be with him, and I'm currently sitting in our apartment now. And life is just so much better, and yay. No more 12-hour overnight shifts. No more 12 shifts. hours. Now I work at home, work doing nothing but game dev and streaming and YouTube, and basically just living my happy, wonderful fairy tale life now. Dreams mm -hmm. do come true. Yay! It could yay. happen to you. It could happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what even is this? This, this is, is awesomeness. This is, this is the most amazing panel you've ever been on, admit it. This is the only panel I've ever been on. Yeah. Well, then it's the most amazing. And I guess I guess the last thing I can really talk about was uh, the bipolar uh, charity event that we did, which wasn't directly like for me at all. It was uh, literally something I requested from our, our charity streaming group uh, that we were doing like once a month uh, charity streams. Uh, for a cause and for you know a specific charity of our choosing in one month I was like can we do something for bipolar disorder because you know I do suffer from that and I would like us to get some money to send to these people so that we can you know start getting more research on it and uh, that was a really good thing for me to be able to get on the uh, stream and talk for god I think it was over an hour talking yeah, about it was during what my it's stream. like yeah during your shift like about just talking for over an hour like what it is to have that and experience that and to deal with that on a daily basis so to be able to come out and talk about that without the you know the stigma and the fear was something great too and now it's it's not so terrifying for me to talk about it and tell people about it anymore i'm just like oh yeah i have this this thing and i deal with it and i work with it yeah it's been it's been really awesome like actually seeing um, I haven't known Parlock as long as I've known Biwi, and seeing how comfortable Biwi's become, just discussing her life very frankly with people. Um, she was very, you were very, uh, I wouldn't say standoffish, but you were very like, what? What? You know, when you first started streaming, when I first <laughs> saw you. Like, as part of why I loved you, like, Biwi and I started talking immediately. Like, she came into my chat, she threw a raid from Kenji. Yeah, <laughs> and she's she's, she's cracking together. jokes in my chat. I remember and that. And I'm like, and I was like, you got to get in call. What's your Skype? <laughs> and I, I immediately <laughs> brought her into call, and we've been like really good friends ever since. Like, she, like Biwi has been like my best female friend ever since. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I remember the game you were playing. What was what was the name of it again? Like it was. I don't even remember, but I just remember what that this lady like? got killed with like a garden spade or something, and he like shoved like this dirt garden spade down her. And I was like, I guess you could say she ate dirt. And you're like, get in the call, get in the call right now. <laughs> I don't even remember what game I was playing. I don't remember. It was I don't. So oh, oh, I was playing uh, Phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoria. Oh that that God. old ass game. That horrible, <laughs> horrible old game. Uh, but oh. yeah. Uh, Oh my god, that was ridiculous. But yeah, I remember when I first met you, you were you were very funny, but it was almost in a standoffish way. Yeah. And then the more I've gotten to know you, the more that you've talked, the more things that have happened, uh, you've you've become more open and just like, all right, whatever, guys, this is me. Have yeah. fun. L you know? Playing less close to the vest uh, with things and how things are in my life. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been pretty great. Yeah, Woo. GG Zolani. <laughs> GG. That's the one. <laughs> There. Oh, uh, no, no, my door is okay. Zion no, no, got moved to a no, different this channel. Is, this so is the time to I talk. Thought, this is the time to talk. No, Carla. just technical problems. It's fine. No. It's not related. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I saw Zolani leave and come back. Is that yeah, that's just breaking yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, we lost audio. That's why. Yeah, because he's got to be in here in order for us to talk. Okay, he's yeah. back. We're good. He We're got good. timed out. Oh, oh well, because he was in talking. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have it, one job. Good <laughs> 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 oh, You're here to keep us running. <laughs> that's that's it. That's your only job.
<laughs> All right, Kishi, you want to share your experience? <sighs> okay. Oh, hopefully I won't make anybody cry. Um, I can't think I start at the beginning, really, uh, before the whole streaming thing happened. Um, uh, I guess, uh, hmm. When I was growing up, uh, I, I was extremely shy. To the point that when uh, we had a home health aide, she said that I w did not talk to her until three months along as she been showing up at our house. But uh, it's, it's like, yeah, like at times I could not even talk on the phone or answer it or talk to anybody. I would hide behind my mom, my dad. And my dad said my biggest achievement was actually ordering fast food by myself up at the counter. But um, yeah. <laughs> I can't uh, even do that now, honey. I can't even call and order pizza. So it's, it's I, okay. I don't call. I use the internet. Either. The internet is my friend. I, 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 I make Slothborn do it, but he doesn't do that either. He doesn't call me. <laughs> he uses the internet too. Same. Yeah, it's like, it's because they mess up orders. I, I've had that happen too many times. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. And, and with a lisp, I make... S sounds to when I put making the this sound, and it was just stuff I didn't want. Watching TV and being by myself, but and I have to say I actually did not have any friends. Um, some said they were my friends, but uh, I just I just got stopped being invited to birthday parties after a while. Uh, it was like it was, yeah, it was a very alone time for me. Uh, most of the times I spent in my room ignoring my thoughts and falling in love with Disney movies and uh, trying to draw stuff. Trying to get better anyway. But the internet became my friend and thankfully I didn't meet any weirdos. Shut up, cat. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm so sorry. My cat is. Everybody knows my relationship with my cat. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Uh, yeah. But the internet has been pretty much the way I've been making friends, very slowly and very few. But um, it was after a while. A friend told me about YouTube. There was a Let's Player and. After a while of watching him, I really enjoyed it, and he was streaming on Twitch. And from there, I hung out there for a while, and I was like, okay, does anybody else know any good streamers I could watch? And one guy named Zero Daylight, he was like, oh, hey, you could watch my streams. And I was like, okay, sure. And that was actually how I met Squeaky. And another person exactly. named Hachi. Mm -hmm. Hachi, uh, she brought in Cinnamon Toast Ken's crew. That were in the chat, and uh, I brought them over to Zero, and I met Squeaky, I met Kate, I met Spira. I actually met you in Cinnamon Toast Ken's chat. I I hadn't gone to Zero's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it was uh, Hachi that said, "Hmm." Yeah, it was Hachi. Uh, that kind of got me over to Cinnamon Toast Ken's and hanging out and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, like. Yeah, friends, and then they were like, well, "Yeah, you should try streaming." And I was like, "Are you sure?" Because then that would make me have to do talking. Actually, the reason I was told to do some streaming because I was in call, uh, reading a creepy pasta with zero. Yes, I, I remember was, that. Yeah, I was the creepy voice. Everybody loved it. So then they were like, "You should try streaming." And I was like, "But I don't do. I don't have any games actually back back then, and now I have too many." But <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> well, look okay, at my 450 games. As you, not as many as you, because I have Zippo money. I have like 400 something games. <sighs> yeah, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Over a thousand. You hear oh, that sloth yeah. up the ante? <laughs> Yeah, that have... sloth. Keep me ahead of Bee Wee. We have, um, we have, uh, <laughs> we have family sharing, so all his games are my games now. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Continue, Kishi. Uh, 
Well, it's just it, behind the whole streaming thing, uh, cat. <laughs> She wants treats, like, really badly. No, she wants my food that's on my desk right now. Treats, exactly. Mac Kitty, you can't have my food. You can't have a spare. Mac Kitty. Mac Kitty. Mac Kitty. Mac Kitty. Mac Kitty. My boyfriend just walked into that, by the way. He's, got, he's like, what are you? I told him I was going to be in a serious panel, and he walks into me going, Mac Kitty, Mac Pat Pat. <laughs> Can't be a serious panel. We are both in here. That's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> Kishi? Okay. Go for it, Kishi. All right. Well, I would have to say before the whole streaming thing, the thing that happened in my life was um, I actually had to drop out of school uh, after eighth grade because my mom got really sick. Uh, she had a very rare... Um, F, uh, I guess it's called FTD, it's not STD, but FTD, frontal temporal dementia. I did a whole, uh, speech, uh, oral, um, speech thing in speech clash, which I absolutely hated. But, um, it was pretty much like having Alzheimer's, but for, for people early on, like she was in her, for, uh, Early, no, late 40s when she got it pretty much watched her deteriorate uh, over the years to which I actually had to be housebound for a few years after I had to drop out of homeschooling um, and uh, it was pretty much being housebound is uh, pretty much every day stuck in the house and one pretty much Saturday being out for two hours to be by myself in the mall, and then Sunday lunch. Now that the rest of the time I had to be in my room or on the computer or sleeping because at some point I was actually depressed and I actually had to go through therapy for that. Half the time it was just, I don't know if anything was being fixed, but uh, it was many years watching my mom waste away, forgetting everything. Um, and I finally got my driver's license. I could actually, I could actually get out more. Uh, my brother didn't want anything to do with it. So he was pretty much gone uh, as much as possible because he didn't, even though if not uh, infection, um, how worth uh, contagious, it's, he didn't care, he just didn't want to be around it. So pretty much it was myself and my father who took care of her at, when the home health aide wasn't there. But, um, it, was, it went on for, I want to say three years, but it felt like eternity. Uh, just, I, I got into college and I it was like my first year I had my car accident. And she passed away New Year's Day when I had to walk in on that. Uh, a lot of, it, it was very tough, and I think it kind of, uh, kind of, oh, what's the word? Dif, uh, hmm. I don't, I don't know. Is it bottled? It, it? Uh, hmm, no, I don't, I don't want to say stifled. Uh, stunted, yeah, kind of stunted and uh, socially for a long time. And dreaming was pretty much trying to get myself back out there to actually meet people. Uh, I actually actually met a streamer that I became friends. Oh, my computer, no, <laughs> computer, my, no, baby, my, please. My, it went. It went to go into hibernation. No, you can't go into hibernation. I want to go into hibernation. No, you're not a bear. It's wow. spring. It's too late, Parla. <laughs> Damn it! No, it's uh, summer. It's really too late. <laughs> this well, is the time where you get fatten up. This is what you do in the summertime. Eat. But I don't oh, do much there. else. <laughs> and you're doing it right. <laughs> oh yeah. 
<laughs> Living the life. Yeah. Uh, who was I? Uh, stunted. Yeah, uh, college. I went through college, made a few friends, but it still can't beat the internet friends and meeting people and streamers and uh, just getting it, my art out there as well because Wiki and everybody else have been really great in spreading uh, my stuff out there and saying, hey, we'll help you out. And like, I couldn't have anybody else do that for me that everybody else would be like, hey, that's great, then walk away. But uh, yeah, it's like streaming. I'm getting better and I'm hoping maybe someday I'll even have a YouTube channel. <laughs> That'd be great. YouTube's well, awesome. Well, you've got a gallery now. Yes. Kind Can of? we please link to her stuff? Because let me tell you guys, this girl does amazing work. Amazing, beautiful paintings and drawings. Just absolutely gorgeous. Most of them right now are on my Twitter. The real Kishi. Yeah, because somebody else took my name on Tumblr, and I was like, no, I'm the real one. Oh, is, uh, is if somebody Tumblr... could make those links clickable, please, uh, uh, Zelani or Parlock, somebody. Yeah. Um, Tumblr, she she posted a lot of her art from her Twitch stream uh, in 2013 to her Tumblr, and her Twitter has been most recently because of the uh, it's not digital art uh, that yeah. she's posting so much as it is, like, actual paintings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, I'm going to, I have to try to get that there, but I really need to produce so much to get that gallery filled. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps I, I can two... help you with that. Oh. <laughs> and I, can, and I actually can sit down and tell you about what I need from you. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, it's, uh... yeah, that's pretty much up to date. Uh... <laughs> so that's so that's life now, you know. Yeah, my life now. So casual. I, I I don't have a job really, but um, the gallery is my life and art and stuff and my friends. Friends. Yay! Yeah, and I'm hoping to get back into the into the streaming. Definitely on Hitbox because Hitbox is awesome. Yay! Yay! Okay. I then. I really do love Hitbox. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, not that's not like a plug or me just being like, because I'm here. You know, I, I actually really do. Can we have um, our t-shirts now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, the I guess my story. Um, I don't know how long it is. Uh, I'm like really nervous. I haven't. I, there's only one person that I've told this, and he's in this call. And I told him earlier today uh, about how streaming really changed my life and um if i start crying please pardon me i will try to make sure that uh my um that y'all can still hear me and that you can hear my words and what i'm saying uh in 2010 okay uh, just to, just as background in gaming i played console games growing up but i've never been a serious gamer um I'm still not a really serious gamer. I game when I can. I game with friends. It's, it's a social activity for me. It always has been a social activity for me. Okay, so I went to college, met a guy. We got engaged. We got married. Turns out he, he was extremely ab abusive in every way except physically. He did not hit me because other people could see that. I spent a year with him. I gained a lot of weight. I was trapped in the house. I was housebound by force. Um... And I didn't have a lot of escape. And I wasn't really aware of the gaming community at that time. And I was too depressed to do anything about it anyway. Like if, I, if I'd been gaming, I didn't have the motivation or the drive. So um, at the same time, I was starting to get really sick. I was starting to have seizures. My joints were hurting. I didn't know why. I would get fevers, uh, colds, pneumonia. I got pneumonia like twice while I was married for the, in like the one year. And uh, I held a big event with uh, a bunch of people. Like, I'm, I'm an avid shooter. I love, I love, you know, target shooting, and, and I do carry a gun for self-defense because I have been raped, and uh, I believe in self-defense, you know. So uh, I had a group of friends, and we, we got together. We went out to a friend's land and just shot a bunch of tar targets. And while I was doing that, my ex-husband was moving his things out of the house, and he just left. And we got divorced. 
and I stayed with my dad's for my dad for a while. And then my current boyfriend, um, I've known him for uh, like 11 or 12 years now, and we'd known each other for about eight or nine years at that point. And we started talking and dating and, uh, I moved in with him relatively quickly, actually, all things considered, but, um, he was the one good thing in my life at, uh, in 2012. Um, I'd been with him for, you know, over a year. Uh, by the end of 2012, we'd been together for almost two years. I had, I was still sick. I had an unofficial diagnosis of Lyme disease, but nobody believed me. Nobody believed I was sick. Everybody was like, you know, my, I'd been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and, uh, Fibromyalgia in this country is treated as an attention seekers disease. If you have it, it's usually caused by something, but usually when you're diagnosed with it, doctors don't bother to figure out why you have it. Uh, so then people are still seeking answers and seeking help and they're seen as annoying. I was annoying because I knew that something else was causing it, but I couldn't get anybody to believe me. My family didn't believe I was sick. Um, DM Fox is my sister in here. And uh, she she knew I was sick, but it's one of those things where you know, but you can't say anything because you don't know what's going on, you know? And so there's nothing that can be said. And I didn't have a lot of support. I lost a lot of my friends when I was married because I couldn't go anywhere. And I was housebound and I was by myself and I didn't, I couldn't do anything. And so, um, you know, my boyfriend was the best thing I had in my life. I was still seeking answers. I had nothing aside from him that I felt I could live for. And uh, I was suicidal. I was depressed. I was on all kinds of different medications that messed with my mind. I had no idea what I was going to do. And I didn't want to like shoot myself or take too many pills because I'm of the philosophy that a gun is to defend me, pills are to help me get better. So I was stuck in limbo. I wanted to die, but I didn't. I couldn't. You know, I didn't have a way out. And uh, to distract myself from these suicidal thoughts, I started watching YouTube. <laughs> and uh, I started watching games specifically. And somebody on Facebook mentioned the game Amnesia. And they said it was a horror game, but watching people play it was hilarious. And I figured, well, I, I kind of have this philosophy that I laugh when things get bad. Because uh, what else are you going to do, you know? And so I thought, well, I'll laugh at some, at some horror, you know? <laughs> so I went on YouTube and I found Halloween 4545, who I actually talked to on Twitter now, like we're kind of buds now, which is great. Um, and then I watched his playthrough of Amnesia and then I found Cinnamon Toast Ken. I saw that he had a live stream thing and I was like, what the hell is live stream? Like I literally had no idea what it was. And I found the link uh, through some, you know, some creative, uh, I guess, Googling. And I went in there and I met people, I made an account, and I just sat there and I watched for a little while. And this was in late October. And I met Kishi, and I met someone named Nate, and I met uh, Yaffle, Ashley. I met so many people in there. And, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I started talking, tweeting with people. I'm, I can't read chat while I'm talking, so if you guys are saying stuff to me, I will, I will respond to it when I'm finished. Um, but I, you know, I, I started, I started talking to people and I started kind of getting to know people and I started playing Torchlight, which is an ARPG. I don't even remember how I started playing it. I don't really play RPGs, but it, it was something to do. It was something to distract me while I played or while I watched YouTube. And, uh, Kishi and me and, and a bunch of other people decided that we were going to try to start streaming. And so we were each other's first audience and we started getting it set up. And I still have my inaugural stream saved as a highlight on Twitch because it was that important to me. Because that was the moment that I got the hobby <laughs> that kept me from doing anything drastic. And, um, throughout the past couple of years, I got my official diagnosis of Lyme disease. I started my antibiotics. I was on them for a year. I actually just stopped them about a month ago. I had to have a hysterectomy. Um, and through all of it, you know, the community's been there and I'm going through some really rough stuff now. Like I have PTSD that's untreated because I can't really afford really good medical treatment, but I'm dealing with it and the community's helping me to deal with it. But, um, 
as a way to help me, um, and of course I'm going to talk about this more on Thursday, as I said, but as a way to help me deal with my own problems, I like to help people. I like to laugh at my at myself when stuff goes wrong, and I like to help people. And so I formed a charity streaming group with uh, Matt. Um, you guys know him as as Matt's Nether on here and on Twitter, or Matt's too on uh, on Twitch. And we started Wolfpack Gaming to try to help people, and uh, we've done streams for various organizations and for various people. Uh, Bwe was one of the people who benefited, and then they surprised me and did a stream for me in February to help me with my medical bills with Lyme. And that's the reason I'm I'm so grateful that I did get into streaming because um, if I had lost my resolve or rather gotten my resolve to do something bad to myself um i would have never i wouldn't have met Bowie. i wouldn't i wouldn't have met kishi i wouldn't have met parlock i wouldn't have met any of the people that matter to me as much as they do i don't have many in real life friends i used to be really gregarious and outgoing and then i got sick and that all changed and so my me my main means of communication is the computer. And I know that any time of day I can open my laptop and somebody will be on Skype if I need someone to talk to. And while most people will try to will talk to me about issues and I'm more than happy to listen, don't get me wrong. Like somehow I've become this person that people love to talk love to talk to about their problems and I I love that. It makes me feel needed. And um I know that I can talk to, to people anytime I need to, and that has been invaluable to me. And I, streaming literally saved my life. And I wanted to do this panel because I know there are other people out there who share this story, who share Kishi's story and Parlock's and Biwi's, who have issues that they may not have been able to deal with on their own and they may not have had the real life support to help them through but through gaming as a medium and through streaming in particular as a means of communication they have found a group of people that you know can sympathize and empathize and communicate and make sure you know that they're never alone and uh, I wanted to I wanted to make absolutely certain that everybody who was attending this conference knew that e e e3 is is kind of superficial. Indie e3, we're trying to get a little deeper. I, I see that we're trying to get a little deeper. I wanted to make sure that people knew exactly how deep gaming can really go. And without streaming, without these people. I would not be able to to affect the world the way that I do. Um, I know that I've helped a lot of people, and I get confirmation all the time. Thank you so much. And I wouldn't hear that if it wasn't for a, somebody making a comment on my Facebook to check out an amnesia playthrough. If, if the littlest things make the biggest difference. It's yeah, uh, I, I right. think. Sorry, yeah, I think one of the big things that this sort of event seems to forget is that gaming just isn't about the games yeah. it's all about this connection between the developers and their community and then players and their community and the streamers and their community and it just it's more about building social support structures than just here's a video game let's press buttons and have stuff happen on the screen there is so much more to that which stuff like e3 completely tosses aside which is really, really crucial to just pull the focus on, even for a little bit. Because so many people wouldn't be here, so many people wouldn't be involved in Indie E3, in normal E3, in wider games in general, if that community didn't exist. And it's one of the most important things in games, to me personally. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just reading some of the stuff that people are saying in chat... Um about how, you know, it's giving people a lot of hope and just motivating people. You know, like being in this community, like it came and like I was saying, it came out about a lot of stuff that had happened, you know, in my life. Um, it, it really does help to give you such a sense of, of strength 
uh, so you know, I'm not saying it doesn't matter what happens in your life. You can get get over it and get through it. But I'm just it, it, I'm gonna share a little bit of story with you guys about myself beyond uh, what I told you tonight. And this is really it's tough for me to do this. Um, because I think Squeaky's the only one in this chat who knows, uh, like, my whole backstory. But my point of telling you all this... What's that? Yeah, no, no, I will. Okay. Yeah, no, I will. It, 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 it is. Um, I, I avoided keywords because yeah, of, because I knew. I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm I'm going to be yeah. very very careful in how I choose my words and how I want and what I'm about to share. But my my point in sharing this is, um, the terrible things can happen to people in their lives, but there is a way a place you can find where you where you are safe, even if it's on the internet. That's okay, guys. That's all right. We're still people. And we're still, you know, connecting with each other in just, you know, across the world. And it's, and it's okay. So be very careful how I choose my words here. Uh, when I was very, very small, uh, my mother was a single mother as well. And she was working ridiculous hours, much like I was. And she had me in a daycare. And... I hope this isn't a trigger for anybody, <laughs> you know, but uh, the, when I was staying there, there was a uh, another little boy there who was taking me and, you know, taking advantage of little four-year-old me. And I was told that I was um, lying when I told people about it and to be four years old and to turn incredibly suicidal because of what was happening and people telling me I was making it up. I shut down as a person. I stopped talking. I didn't really have much to do or say. It was bad. My parents had to move away across the country from Connecticut to Montana just to protect me and to try to save me. And I basically didn't start really having any memories until I was about nine or ten years old because of the trauma that had happened to me. And... I finally got, and when I got into high school, I had, I had trouble all through growing up just because of just how, what a miserable person I was. I had no social skills. I just didn't know how to talk to anybody. I was just constantly terrified. And it, the trauma was so bad, I just literally suppressed all the memories. I had no idea what had happened to me. I just knew that something was wrong and I couldn't figure out what it was. And it was never talked about with my parents again. Um, when I was 16, um, I'd never dated anybody before. I was completely just shy and just kind of a you know, homely, mousy little thing, if you will. And um, uh, there was this guy who just took notice of me. And I thought, oh, my gosh, there's somebody really who wants to notice me and spend time with me. And um, I went on my first date ever. And during my first date, I got taken advantage of. You know, something that was important to me got taken from me. And I was utterly destroyed. And for two months, it went on. This horrific abuse, thinking that it was my fault. And that this is what just what happens to people who are like me. And so I went through, finally after two months, I turned out to be pregnant and he left me. And I was just so traumatized by the whole thing that I ended up miscarrying from it because my, my body just couldn't handle it. And just spent my whole rest of high school just terrified of men and anybody that would try to get close to me. And then all through college, just went through abusive relationship over and over and over. Just terrible. And it wasn't until after college and living out on my own and actually going into the army and then becoming a mother that I really started got into the gaming thing and I'd spent my whole life just terrified of everything and everyone. And I started getting into this, the streaming thing and the YouTube thing. And it brought, it brought out that side of me that I was so afraid to face because I was like, people don't care. These horrible things happen to me. So what? 
Nobody it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to be there. Listen to me. Nobody cares about me. And I was, I was incredibly wrong. People do care. Yes, it's we do. <laughs> utterly tremendous. You know how much people care to the point where you know. I, f I feel safe enough and strong enough and safe enough with these people around me that I can share this with 305 people right now on the internet. Um, and that, that, yeah, that's, that's all the stories I'm going to tell squeaky. Those are the only, yeah, those are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, I, I wasn't sure how far you were going to go with that. I was like getting ready <laughs> yeah. like to, to say trigger words, but uh, Wee has been through a lot. Yeah. And my, my point is, it gets better you know you, there there is a place you can go there's there's so many people in the world and you'll just happen to come across them when you least expect it they'll just happen to be there it does happen i promise you it's good <laughs> <laughs> and i, I think um sorry i think one of the really good things about sites like hitbox and twitch and youtube is that it is full, it is completely chock full of role models. It's completely full of people who have gone through similar things to you. People who feel the same as you. People who know, who would understand what you've been through to an extent. And anyone can access that. Anybody could be watching the stream and identify with what Bewee's been saying. Anybody could identify with what kishi has been saying. And it's not like you're having to re like actively reach out and take that leap into asking for help it's just naturally there which i think is a really important thing for people because some people are very uncomfortable asking for help about this sort of thing people are very uncomfortable talking about this so having other people have a community where they feel safe enough to do that for other people is a really really valuable thing to have yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was typing uh, links. Um, <laughs> I'm that person. Uh, <laughs> Somebody has to do it. I, Someone I, needs to be that person. <laughs> yeah. I, OCD for the win. I, I just <laughs> want to note particularly that we have about five minutes left. If, if any Oof. any particular thing that that wants to be noted, that really needs to be noted, uh, you should probably do that very soon. Just want to note that. Yes. I was I was going to go ahead and make some closing remarks. Um, basically, the, my point in having this panel, as I noted at the beginning, though we had some new people come in, so I want to make sure that everybody hears this. No matter what you're going through, no matter what may be going on in your life, gaming is not superficial. It's only superficial if you make it superficial. Don't let anybody tell you that you're wasting your time online chatting with your friends. Don't let anybody shame you for being in a stream chat. If you're in an, in an online long-distance relationship as a result of Twitch, you know, you go, Glenn Coco. You know, Ooh. like, <laughs> there, is, there is absolutely no reason. Those for... work out, too. I'm living proof. <laughs> yeah. Bewey and Sloth would not be together if it wasn't for Twitch. Um, Supervin47 and Hanana Hammock are together because of the internet. I'm actually with my boyfriend. I've known him for 12 years now. We met on Live Journal for crying out loud. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. That was Damn, a long Live time Journal. ago. Holy shit. Right? Journal Does it like exist? Like 2002. Internet. Yeah, 12 wow. years ago. Yeah. So you never know what the internet's going to do for you these days. It's not like it used to be. And if you need help, if you need anything, there are people who can help you. And it's something as simple as playing a game with someone for a few hours. It's something as uh, simple as just, you know, just being present. If someone's lurking in your channel, don't pressure them into talking. You know what? That mm -hmm. might be the only way they get any interaction. You know, and we're here, we're, we're here to tell our stories to, to encourage you to tell yours. If there's something you need to get off your chest, if there's something that streaming has done for you, feel free to, to, to let it out. Don't let what? anybody shame you into hiding it. Mm -mm. There's there's no reason to hide who you are just because of the medium through which you express it. Your and presence on your presence on the internet is your space to talk about what you want to talk about, and letting anybody else say otherwise 
is not productive. It is not a helpful mindset to have. So just be you, basically. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> is everyone okay with that? I want to... Yep. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for coming on last minute as well, because this was literally planned today. There was a bunch of miscommunication about which panel was actually happening. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I wanted to thank uh, by Winningism and Kishi and Parlock for joining me, because I did not want to talk about myself for an hour. <laughs> really? Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not about this. <laughs> not about this. Um, and I want to thank Zolani and uh, Solon and TJ and everybody for hosting us and for allowing us to have this space to talk. And I want to thank everybody in chat for making this a safe space for us to talk. And I want to thank Hitbox for hosting us. All right, then. So, um, so yeah. I mean, thank thank you to all four of you for sharing your stories. Just thank you. I just, I'm not really sure what to say. I'm kind of lost for words. But, I mean, that was this panel from this hour. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, that is the last panel of the day. Um, unless there's something TJ isn't telling me or something, I'm pretty sure this is the last panel of the day. So thank you all. If you if you watched this panel or any of the panels, thank you for participating in D3 today. Um, we have panels going back to back to back tomorrow. We are stuffed with panels tomorrow. So and we're mm -hmm. we has a panel Thursday. We got a few on Friday, and then we're packed to the broom again on Saturday. So we have tons of content coming, tons of great stories and great people. Um, and that is a lot of it. So have a great night, you guys. Um, thanks to all of you. Um, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.